Hey, so I thought I might try and do a YouTube tutorial just showing how I make a lot of different um, skin indentations and marks and uh, how I make little blood drops and things like that. So um, yeah, I thought I'd give it a little bit of a crack. So you need to have Daz 3D, which is free to install, free to download, and it comes with the free pack of Genesis 9 figures and things like that that you can use for um, your models and stuff, but I've been really enjoying using this death model. So it's pretty easy, so you would just um, load your model up, which might take a little while unfortunately. On TV model, it's easy enough, I'm not going to do anything here at all. I mean, you can add clothes in here and everything like that, but this is just for the skin indentation, so I thought uh, for now I'll just I'll send to Blender, which is a bridge that you might have to install through um, Daz Install Manager. It's super, super easy though, and so it's already sent it over to Blender. So here I'll just click Import New Genesis Figure, which is super easy. So they've got this little lady, you know, she's hanging out, she's looking a bit dead, but that's all good. The skin, oh, the Daz skin settings is pretty average, and I used to go through and change all the all the shaders myself and things like that and uh, you know make like a perfect kind of skin and things like that but honestly there's uh, add-ons now that are just so good that there's just no point so you have humidify and global skin uh, I prefer humidify um, so I'll just shut that on it's one click and it's just immediately just amazing amazing skin um, and there's a lot of testing that you can do as well to get it how you like it Maybe put the roughness down a bit or something, you know. Uh, but to get interesting skin indentations and different things on the model, I think first I'll make the subdivide to three and apply it. So now when I can like go into sculpt mode or something, you know, and it's pretty obvious, pretty easy. It's already showing up as um uh, looking kind of like it's gross extruded maybe like a someone who's been bruised or something like that but for now I'm not going to do that just yet you can open up the node tree and you can see in here is the albedo head for some reason it's not working for me so to get that as an image on my laptop open up texture paint and search for the name of the um, humidify skin on here so I just type in Vero and it comes up so you go image save as just chuck in your desktop should work for now uh, and then take that image into uh, procreate or into photoshop and you can do a lot of uh, drawings and uh, like scratches and blood and you know scarring or you know you can do makeup and anything like that on it uh, and so after you've done that i've not headed for the vero and for me i've just done a quick little drawing here in procreate uh, you can see it looks a lot like scarring and um, you know different kind of scratches and bruises on the face and things like that uh, and the good thing that you can do now that make it a little more interesting is head into sculpt mode and open up the clay brush and just start sculpting where the the brush lines are or the paint lines um, oh yeah make sure it's on on minus and then turn the strength up just a little bit and unfortunately my computer is a little bit slow but if you're on a good computer you can see see it happening in real time but so just have a look you can see now it looks a lot more kind of like an indentation kind of like bru not bruising but like a just like a mark on the skin pretty much but yes yeah, so you can just get for each one I'll just skip to this real quick
Yeah, so that's pretty much how you do the indentation sculpting of skin mixed with a um, albedo map. It's really good to do through Procre uh, Procreate or Photoshop because you can really paint and draw, uh, for example, like these little bruises, and you can see what it looks like. It's, it, it looks pretty, pretty bad, to be honest. But once it's actually on the face, you know, it can look a lot, a lot better. Um, but you can add in things like little bits of bruising, or it's quite good to do a f like quite a few different colors and a few different little, um, like yeah, just like sketches of what you think scarring or anything like that would look like. Uh, so that's that for now. I mean, yeah, it looks pretty bad, but then you know, once it's in here, you can see it looks a lot better. Um, for this one, I actually had added it in a new uh, figure. It's just, it's just something a little extra. I don't know if it's really too um, up in one's alley, but you can add a new figure uh, and then chuck it into pose mode. And I'm just going to move her away. I'm pr pretty bad at editing myself, uh, animation and things like that, so I kind of just like do it as basic as possible to kind of get what I need and then hide the rest that absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. But this is a piece I'd worked on recently uh, with someone else and this is what I did for this one is I just put the hands kind of digging into the head. Unfortunately it's not going to look the same as I did where the drawing is for now. But yeah, the idea is that these fingers are kind of pushing into the head sort of thing. And you can easily just sculpt sculpt a little more to get it kind of where you want. You know, make the fingers look like they're really pushing into the head. It's really fun. You can really mess around with a lot of stuff like this. Um, another cool thing as well is if you wanted to... Oh, so for this I would always uh, delete pretty much everything else. And then you can add in a camera and command option zero to put it where you're looking. I always turn mine really high up, not too sure why, but everyone uses 90, so make it a little bit different. Uh, with this, I usually go 3200, just that Instagram square size. And as you can see, I mean, it's only taking a few minutes and, and you've got something pretty cool already. Um, always turn the background off, I don't know why. And the Jazz sun that it comes with is here. I mean, it, it's honestly fine. You can chuck a humidify onto her arms. And yeah, I mean, you've pretty much already got a pretty interesting little little model to look at. Um, you can add the add-ons that I've used in the bottom below. Um, a good thing as well with the devs is if you are using hairs, just make sure you go down to light pass and put it up to like 16 maybe. It just makes the hairs more fine. Uh, and one other cool add-on, actually, as well, is an uh, add-on called Tiny Eye. I'll show you what it does. It's really cool. So Tiny. Uh, and it, So Tiny Eye just gives you a whole bunch of different eyes that you can use. It's super, super realistic. All these animal ones, uh, cartoonish ones. So if I just type in real, uh, do maybe... What's a strange one? brown amber or something like that. Just snap it up to here. And just line up with the eyes that you've already got. I'm not, there's probably an e a lot easier way to do this, but this is how I do it. So let's chuck that in there. And you can do the same with the other eye if you like. I'm probably not going to show the other side. And then give it the originals. Uh, roughly in the right place. Not, not really, but That'll do for now. And you can have a look, and yeah, they have a completely different color eyes. You can make them however you like. They're pretty interesting, actually. There's a lot of different ones that you can do, and there's a lot of um, parameters as well that you can change on the eyes and uh, how they all look and work. You know, if you want slurry to be a little smaller or higher, every, like every single thing to do with the eyes, pretty much, is, um, is on here. So it's kind of cool. Um, and I'll add that in. It's a free add-on as well, which is quite cool. Unfortunately, Humanify is um, 
a little bit expensive, but it is it is worth it. It is super super cool. And you can over exaggerate as much as you like. And yeah, no, that's pretty much it. If you yeah wanted to make something like this, it's a little bit dark or a little bit strange, but you know, I mean, everyone's different, likes different things. So, and this is the first tutorial I've tried doing, so I'm gonna try and do more and maybe get a little bit better at them or something like that. But for now, it gives you gives you enough to take away to work on your own, I think, with um, something that you'd like to make. So yeah, I hope you have. Well, isn't really super basic, and it's not uh, like a beginner tutorial. I think you do have to know a few little hotkeys that I'm kind of skipping around through. But I will work on making a few more tutorials. It's just my first one, so I, hope, I mean, they can only hopefully get better. So thanks a lot, and I, I do hope you enjoy it. And uh, if there are little bits and questions, let me know, and I'll try my best to answer those. And um, yeah, hopefully this just gets better as it goes on. Thanks.